My little clapper is beating the shit now. You know, this helped me sync the audio together once I'm doing it in post, but. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lockout Man Podcast Show. I am your host, Lockout Man. This is where we park in politics every night with some guests and um and yeah unfortunately didn't have a guest to come through tonight i had scheduled uh a young lady to come through but she you know kind of like backed out of the deal and uh and yeah but i i'm going to keep it moving for you guys because that's what i do that's what i do this uh this episode right here is subscriber questions and comments and posts from Facebook. As always, I'm I'm on Facebook throughout the day because I am in all these Facebook groups. Shout out to the Facebook groups, the trucking Facebook groups that I'm in. Shout out to them, but they do have some real good comments, real good questions, and real good posts. Let's start with the posts that I have found today. And this is what I found. Actually, it was a post comment and it was to an article, which when you think about this article, it does seems to have some truths to it. She says, what this tells me is I always have options and that I know my value. If you know your value, people will treat you better. You never have to work for a company that doesn't appreciate you. And you don't. If you know you if you know your worth and your value, then you would get with a company that will treat you better. All trucking companies is pretty much the same. It's all about the money. It's all about it's all about the shipment. It's all about the freight. How long can you get it there? How fast can you get it there? Can you get it there on time? That's what it's all about. You become that new driver, that new jack that comes up into the into the company. You very you wide eyed, bushy tailed, and you ready to run. That's what you do. You ready to run? That's what I did. I came up in the U.S. Express all open, like, yo, give it to me and I'll do it. Did I know my value? Well, at first I didn't. Because I was a new driver coming in trying to get my foot in the door. But after a while of driving and getting a sense of how they treating me, then yeah, I became real, real cautious on what my value is now. And then after US Express, I never had to work for a company that didn't appreciate me. If I feel that a company is not appreciating me, it's time to go. It's time to go. If you're not getting appreciated by your DM, it's time to go. If you're not getting appreciated by how much they're paying you, it's time to go. It's time to go. Because you already know your worth. You got your CDLs, your commercial driver's license, and your DOT medical card. As long as you keep your DAC together, you always got a job but you might want to be careful with jumping from job to job because now companies don't want to see that no more back then you can you could get with company a they treat you bad you leave out and go to the orientation next week You 
you can go to the orientation next week. Know your worth. Know your value. So in the article uh, by Rolling Stones says more than 63,000 truck driving jobs are available at any given time, which is true. It is always available. Everybody, every trucking company is hiring. All you got to do is, you know, all you got to do is download the app driver post man just just put your name out there and look at how many companies will come after you my email is full every day of companies just coming after me look at that look at that companies coming after me every day even I get dark calls like, yo, uh, this is such and such calling from trucking company B. Um, are you st are you still interested in looking for a job? Well, I'm 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 driving for a company that I'm uh, that I'm comfortable with right now. But what do you have to offer? Well, we got we we got excellent home time. We got competitive wages and uh and brand new spanking shiny silver trucks. Oh, 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 okay, okay. All these companies is hiring, man. Go to Indeed, Glassdoor. Hell, come to Lockout Men Mates to Call. Five years in the making, y'all. And still making calls to this day. He gets, I gets the information out there for you guys for these trucking companies that you might be interested with 63,000 trucking jobs at one time y'all companies are struggling to find and retain workers to meet the demand are they though are they I mean let's 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 be honest here. Let's be honest, okay? If the company would treat the driver right, would the driver have a reason to leave? Think about that, companies. If you treat the driver right, would the driver have a reason to leave? If his home time is on point, if his money is on point, if the miles is on point, if you treat that driver like, like, like the driver that he is, that, that does it for your company, do he has a reason to leave? No, he don't, he don't. A driver shortage can wreak havoc with the nation economy. Everything is moved by trucks, period, point blank. You, you bring it in from an airplane, it goes on a truck. You bring it in from a train, it goes on a truck. Everything is moved by trucks, man. Perfect example, Houston, Texas, last couple of weeks, the snowstorm hindered shut down the shut down the trucks they 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 aisles is empty they shelves is empty a airplane helicopter ain't gonna land on 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 a helipad and bring the stuff in it's gonna be done by trucks that's why the freight that's going down south is good right now two three dollars a mile because they hurting but as soon as they get as soon as they get filled, oh they done. The miles, the 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 rate's gonna go back down. More than 70% of goods is shipped in the US. Everything from life saving uh, pharmaceuticals to the food that you eat to the car that you drive is moved by a truck driver. 
give us our get get give us our appreciation. You know, I you know, I, I rolled past this billboard and it says we appreciate the heroes. And on there it was medical. It, it was something about it was everything it was medical and something else and something else and something else blah 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 but it wasn't no no truck drivers no trucking nothing they they didn't say nothing about trucks thank you heroes of the world are are we considered heroes we're putting our life on the line for you guys right now in the midst of this COVID pandemic. Y'all at home chilling. Y'all can't go to work. Y'all working from home because y'all want to keep that, that distance, that social distancing. While we out here that got to, that got to wear a mask and, in, and endure and endure places that we can't even get service at. Knock on the door. Uh, no, you can't come in here. Why not, sir? COVID. Okay, we, I respect that. Mask up. Can't can't go nowhere to eat. Can't sit down in the restaurant no more. Can't even sit down in a motherfucking driver's lounge no more. Can't even get comfortable like we used to. We will we, we will pull up in the truck stop, pull over, get out, go into the driver's lounge and chop it up with the other drivers. Watch them watch some first 48 on TV or whatever movie that TNT got on. Can't even do that no more. They closed all that down. Social distancing. No appreciation. You go up into a truck stop. Oh, we appreciate you, driver. But on it, you you say that, and then on the flip side, you tell us, no, nah, you can't. You, you you can't sit down and eat. McDonald's up in Bolingbrook or Romeoville. Sit down for two minutes. I get somebody come out there and say, yo, you can't be in here. But I'm, I'm not eating. I just need two minutes. Uh, you, you can't be in here. You gotta go. Everything is 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 brought by a driver, but you don't give us our props. You don't give us our props. You don't you don't give it to us. Y'all give it to us when y'all need us, and then when y'all don't need us, y'all destroy us away. Houston need us. The pandemic of last year needed us. And there's a lot of and there's a lot of sick drivers that's catching this COVID shit. I I, I talked to my guy, Youngblood. He came down with COVID. He's a truck driver. I talked to a couple other truck drivers. They came down with COVID. Now they can't even, now the one lady driver that I talked to can't even come back to her job until she take the vaccine. When, when y'all need us, when y'all need us, we, we get all the appreciation. Thank you, we appreciate it, yay. But then, when it's all over said and done, y'all don't need y'all don't need us no more. It's it's the cutoff. It's the finger. It's whatever. Companies are recruiting at a faster clip. They recruiting faster than ever. They calling. They dart calling. They using social media. They doing everything to entice you to come into that company. But new drivers in the field aren't sticking around long enough. Now, you 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 got Johnny over here. Johnny says, yo, I, I really need to change my life and I need to get into trucking because trucking is the only field where I can make about $1,000 a week. 
$800 a week. If I get that, I could change my life. I could pay my bills. I could get my credit rating down. And $1,000 a week, I haven't had that. I'm coming from making $500, $600 a week. Now I'm making $1,000, $1,000 a week. But then when y'all get in here and y'all start seeing what it's like, the sacrifices that you do, the sacrifices that you have to make, getting up in the morning, walk across the cold ass uh, truck stop to go to a shower and then you got to come back in the cold to get back into the truck. A lot of, a lot of people don't have the fortitude to do that shit. Y'all not sticking around long enough. Y'all get out here, y'all get homesick. Oh, wait, wait, I, wait, I thought I was getting home uh, every day. No. And then you find out that this is the company that you had to fucking ask to go home. I mean, you coming from a nine to five that you know you're going to go home every day after and have the weekend off. No, this, no, this industry right here, a hey, uh, fleet manager, I want to go home on uh, uh, this Friday. Oh, okay. Well, we, we'll figure out a way to get you there. Can't just get up and go home. This ain't your truck. The truck is assigned to you, but it's not your truck. You can't drive this motherfucker anywhere that you want to drive it to. I mean, you can, but you'll get in trouble. You get a low every day, every day. You got to sit and wait for your load. You can't just get up and go home. They're like, yo, bro, I'm about to go home very quick and wait for this load, man. No. They ain't going to let you do that. They're not going to let you do that at all. Truck driving is the nation's most deadliest job in the world. Staying safe is a chief concern deadliest i mean just look at what happened last week a couple of weeks ago look look at what happened to me truck slid right into me i tend pile up every year trucks flipped over because they driving too fast for the uh for the conditions It's deadly. It's, it, it, you could lose, you you could lose your mind in the trucking. Depression is high in trucking. You there in that seat for eleven hours a day, driving fourteen hours on duty. You get up from the seat, come right here to this bed. You go to sleep, you wake up, and all you see is the seat and the chair and the steering wheel waiting for you. This ain't a nine to five, bro. Your house is right here, your car, and your job is right there. Think about it. Think about, think about it before you come into this industry. Make sure this is something that you want. Make sure this is something that you want because it's not for everybody. It really isn't. 70% of newly recruits, drivers, leave the profession. See, this is what, this is what they don't tell you. No, nah, they, they tell you, come on, come here. You can make 50 cent. You can make 60 cents, 65 cent. Come on, come on, come on. Get in the seat. We'll treat, we'll take care of you. We'll make sure you are right. But they don't tell you that 70% of newly recruited drivers usually leave the profession within the first year. Top 10 reasons for drivers to leave before I get up out of here. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Let's just stop right here. Take that finger, that hand, that fist, 
and hit that like button. Hook a brother up, man. Also, hit that subscribe button. It really does help the channel. I'm just saying. Let's get back at it. Top 10 reasons for drivers leaving the trucking industry. I mean, why? Why would you why would you want to leave the industry? There could be many reasons for a driver to leave the industry. Now, for a new driver, it could be homesickness or or whatever. You just can't just can't handle it. For a veteran driver like myself, I, I would say I, I would say is it will be a fracture. It will be a little bit here, a little bit there, and then it'll be a big it, 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 it grows to a big problem and then I'm out. When drivers leave your company or the companies, it's most likely not because of another company that enticed them. I mean, if you're good to this driver, he has no reason to leave though, right? Instead, it's sometimes some things that triggers us to leave. And it's not always the big things. It's the small things. It's the succession of small things. Until that one day, that driver has enough. He's not getting the miles. He's tired of calling in and asking for miles every day. Bro, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up? It might be the money. Well, if you're not getting the miles, you're not making the money. Bro, I'm tired of getting $800 a week, man. When am I going to start seeing something in the thousands? When am I going to start seeing that 1500 that you guys guaranteed me? When am I going to start seeing that? When am I going to start seeing that? Help me out here. Help me help you help me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's, it's, it's the small things that, that builds up to, hey, I'm done. I'm done, yo. I'm, I'm out. I'm done. Number one, like I said before, is that it's, it's about the money. You're not making enough. You know, you bring me in, you, 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 you call me up. Recruiter tells me, hey, uh, you can make 65 cent a mile. Oh, okay, cool. All right, you think it's 65 cent a mile, you're gonna, you, you gonna, you gonna clear about a good 1,500, 1,700, and bring home about a good 11 or 12, but as you will probably expect money, issues including rates and getting enough miles are the top reasons why drivers leave i might i, I might be getting 61 cent a mile but i'm not getting the miles to match it oh but if i get 40 cent a mile then i would get the miles to match it but i'm not getting enough money Everything got to be competitive, right? Right? Competitive? Tell me how much I'm going to make right off the rip. Don't come at me with no, oh, well, we're competitive. Uh, we, we got competitive rates. What is competitive rates, yo? Am I getting 50? Am I getting 45? What is competitive? Because there's a lot of trucking companies that's giving 60, 70, damn near a dollar for a company driver. But don't forget, you got to be a 1099 in order to get that. 1099 means that you had to do your own taxes. You know, no benefits or nothing. Not satisfied with the home time? That's another. That's number two. Not satisfied with the home time. Mm. Not getting enough home time. 
Yo, some drivers want to come out here and run, like run, like super run. Yo, let me run for about two, three months at a time, and then I'll go home. But then when you go home, you only going to take about two days off. You got to reset. Or if you get a regional position, you're home every week, but you but you you only home for your 34 hour reset. That's a 24 hour day and just a 10 hour reset. And then you right back on. Make sure you ask that, too. I want to come home Friday. Be off Saturday, off Sunday, and then go back out on Monday. That's what I want. That's what I want. Not a not not enough guys, not enough guys get enough home time, man. What about your fleet manager? That's that's number three. What about your fleet manager? Now I now I said this. I said this all the time. You have a good rapport with your fleet manager. You're going to have a awesome time with the company. I, I proved that when I was with JNR Swoogle, when I was with US Express, and when I was with uh, Wooster Motorways. Now my time with US Express was kind of shaky i didn't get along with my fleet manager but you I, I was rookie with us express though but when i got with jnr swoogle me and matt boom money miles home time and he didn't fuck with me while i was on my home time came back on gave me the gave, gave me the route i mean gave me the lows Ask me if this load was cool. Boom, bam, boom. I'm done. Let's roll. Same thing with Wooster Motorways. Joe, shout out to Joe Versiski, the greatest fucking dispatcher, fleet manager that I had. Shout out to you, bro. I tell you what, man. I will follow you anywhere. If you leave Wooster Motorways and go somewhere else, yo, I'm right there with you, bro. I'm just saying. Current company where I'm at now, fleet manager's on deck. Now, my previous fleet manager, you know, he left to do big things, but the new manager I got is on fleet. Calls me up, asks me like, yo, lockout, I want to talk to you about this next load that we got. All right, what's up with it? You know, this, this, this. And this is the miles that you're going to get. And whatever extra I'll kick in, bam, bam, boom, we're done. That's what I'm talking about. Fleet manager talking to the driver, making sure that the driver is comfortable with the load. Not with a big ass mega carrier where they just throw the load on there and tell you, yo, if you don't move it, you're going to be in trouble. I'm talking about a driver manager that would turn around and say, yo, uh, you comfortable with this load? Yes, no, maybe. And a driver manager that you can talk to and, and let him know about situations. Yo, man, I'm not gonna be able to I'm I'm not gonna be able to move this load, or I got the load and something else is going on. Good rapport with your fleet manager will go a long way people don't just leave companies people leave people facts facts damn it man let me say that again hold on that's the first sound bite of this series man People don't leave companies. People leave people. For drivers, the supervisor is their dispatcher, fleet manager, their prime point contact with the company. By that very nature of the job, relationship is everything. But it could be frugal with problems.
I'm not happy with the way I'm dispatched. Hmm. That's a good one. That's number four. I'm not happy with the way that I'm getting dispatched. Uh, let's see what they're talking about. Beyond the relationship with the dispatcher, there are many opportunities for dissatisfaction with the dispatching and scheduling itself. You get a craft load. Oh, man. Come on, bro. Do I have to take this? Do I have to pick this up, man? Because you know when I go over there, they're going to hold me up. Detention time. Wait time. Unpaid time. You got to give up two hours of your time. And then you held up. You held up at a shipper or a receiver for five hours, six hours, 10 hours. Damn near 24 hours. I'm talking from experience. That happened to me. U.S. Express. 24 hours. I got there at 8 o'clock at night and did not leave until 8 o'clock the next fucking night. But then I got, I, I got hip. I started looking, I started looking and paying attention at the paperwork. That's what you guys need to do too. Y'all, y'all need to, you know, y'all, y'all should know the loads and the weights and everything, but let's pay attention now. Now, when I was hemmed up for 24 hours, I did not, I did not understand things as I do now. So if I get hemmed up now, I'm going to look at the weight of the truck. Bro, it took you eight hours to load 10,000 uh, 10, pounds. It take you 24 hours to load 20,000 pounds. Tell me this. Tell me this. Why do I, why, why got a shipper that takes all damn day to load you, but then when you get to the receiver, it only takes them like an hour and a half, 45 minutes. Unless you get hemmed up at one of these lumper field uh, uh, receivers because they're going to have to count every piece that comes off the truck. And don't you just hate it when when you go to one of these places and you got to give up the keys? Hey, uh. You're gonna have to take. You're gonna have to turn the truck off. You're gonna have to unhook that red airliner. You're gonna have to bring the keys in. For what, bro? Why do I need to bring the keys in again? I was set up for failure. That's what these company. That's what some of these companies do. This means that there are conditions that comes with the jobs, our service, other regulations, company policies that make it impossible for drivers to succeed. Drivers feel that it is a no win situation. Companies put all this stipulations on you. It just makes it hard to win. It's not what you expected, number six, not what you expected, especially when you talk to a recruiter that tells you one thing, and then when you get into orientation, it's a, it's, it's, it's a hot mess. And then from orientation, when you get into the truck, it's, it's out the window. The recruiting and orientation process, I just said it, as well as the first two or three months of the job can quickly push the driver back out the door. Recruiter tells you something. Orientation tells you something different. And then that truck just solidifies it all. Company drivers complained that the life as a driver was not what they expected or that their, comp I mean, that their recruiter lied to them. And that is very common. A lot of recruiters like to say, oh, we, I don't lie. I tell the truth. 
and all like that. Well, maybe there is some good recruiters out there, especially if they work directly with the company. Shout out to KD over at US Express. I mean, no, uh, J and R Schwugel. We made money together. Shout out to her. But then you got other outside entities that recruit for these companies as well. You got recruiting agencies that recruit for these companies and they don't tell you the whole story. They get a commission. You know what a commission is? It's like, it's like when I was in the record business back in the day. Shout out to my man, uh, DJ Kurt Nice. Highway Kurt, shout out to my G. We was, uh, you know, we was in the uh, record business back in the day. And, you know, mistake DJs throughout the city will come up to our stores and stuff and they will give us their mistake. They don't get paid unless we sell. They give us a bulk of 10 and be like, yo, we just need a hundred out of that. We'll come back next week. That's a commission. That's the same thing with, with these, these outside entities that's what they do. They get a commission. So think of it this way. If they get a commission, they got a quota. Now, when they got a quota, then that's when they start getting, that's when they start getting it in because they want to fill their quota. Well, what about this company? Well, this company is great. It's sliced bread. It's this, that, and the other. Okay, okay, cool. Boom, bam, boom. You're in. All right, got my hundred dollars. Next up, I got my hundred dollars. They gotta, they, they gotta meet their quota for the week, so they can get paid. So they gotta find as many drivers and coerce them into the seat, and then you find out. It's not what it seems. Trucking recruiters as a group has an unfortunate reputation for luring drivers with unrealistic claims. One of the best thing companies can do can do is to make sure that the recruiting process isn't setting up expectations that can't be met. I have problems with the equipment or maintenance. Oh my God, the trucks break down every day. They promise you a 2020 and put you in a 2016. They put you in a, they put you in a truck that breaks down every three days. And if it breaks down, you're, you're not moving, you're not making money. They're gonna they're gonna give you some money for your breakdown fee. What? Fifty dollars? What's that? What's that? Bro, I'm I'm missing out on a hundred and fifty dollar day and you're gonna give me fifty dollars. That's the problem with these with these trucks. Now now don't get me wrong, new trucks break down too. You could put me in a you could put me in the 2021. I could drive that motherfucker up and down the highway and all like that, and all of a sudden the death system goes out. Boom. But breakdowns in older trucks are more common. They 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 keep the maintenance up on it. Yo, the death system went out. Death system went out four times. You see a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot about about hooking up the tractor trailers that attract drivers, but the conditions and the maintenance of the equipment of both tractors and trailers can push the driver out the door. If the trailers ain't right. How are they going to move it? Think about that. There's no opportunities to advance. Maybe as far as being a truck driver goes, I really don't think there's any advancement unless you want to become a recruiter. You know, maybe 
the next step up will be owner operations or the next step up will be leasing, I guess. They don't promote out of the truck in the dispatchers. A lot of drivers, a lot of drivers don't want to be dispatchers, but the ones that do want to be dispatchers will be probably good because they will know that they, they will know themselves how to dispatch the driver. For some drivers, it may be an opportunity that they was looking for, but for others, they prefer being behind the wheel than behind the desk. That's me. Yes. No desk. No nine to five. I'm good where I'm at. The company doesn't communicate with, with me. Number nine. And that goes back. That goes back to your dispatcher. That goes back to having a uh, repurl. I mean, repurl. Repurl? Repurl? Re, 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 okay. A re, you, you know what I'm trying to say. You, you know what I'm trying to say. Communications with the driver should not be limited to his dispatcher, though. Communications with the driver should should be a open communications with everybody in the company, including safety. If a driver feels like a mushroom kept in the dark, fed manure, then he's more likely to leave. Drivers don't want to be, drivers want to know what they're getting a stake of bad loads or not getting enough miles or what their future of the company going to be like. Keep the, com keep the communication going. Just saying. I'm not being appreciated. They come with the driver appreciation month. It should be driver appreciation every day. Driver appreciation should go beyond the driver appreciation month. Drivers want to be a part of something, bro. We want to make, we want to feel like we doing something. We essential workers, right? They want to feel like they matter. Their opinions matter. They feedback matter. That's it, man. That's it. We just want to be appreciated. We don't want to, we, we, we want to, we want to, uh, we want to be appreciated once we come out here. Make sure that we're treated with some type of value. And it goes back to knowing your value driver. Once you once you do that, you're good to go. And that's about it. That's going to do it for the Lockout Man podcast show for this evening. Yo, if you like uh, content like this and want to get your questions or or comments or anything answered, hit me up. Leave it in the comments below, man. Talk to me. Let me know. Let me know if you feel this. Let me know if you want to come on to the show and share your experience. Yo, hit me up in the Gmail, Lockout Man Podcast at Gmail. I mean, guests at gmail.com. Hit me up over at IG over at Lockout Man. And just leave it in the comments below if you have any questions or anything like that. I will try to try to get it out for you. If you want to talk or have any questions, just you know, shout out to uh shout out to my IG subscriber that reached out to me and and chopped it up with me. She was interested uh on uh on the decision making that she wanted to uh make a decision against uh the companies that she was looking for shout out to you look me up on ig hit me up on ig if you want a conversation man if you want to talk to me all right if you have any questions hit me up i'll try to answer them for you and again like i said i i like doing segments like this this will probably help somebody else i mean somebody else out so shout out to the uh shout out to the to the uh poster that posted the comment initially and i just took it and I, I just took it and ran with it that's what i do 
All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Y'all come back again, and I'll come at you. I'll come back at you with another one. Peace. Ryan Little. <laughs>